Hi students, how are you all? Welcome in our SS lecture and we have chapter 7 India Location and Features. In our last that period we have seen that different that physical features India has vast and varied physical features like the rivers, valleys, mountain ranges and you know seas, oceans, plateaus, plains and these all are there that India has different physical features. So we already learned about that Indian subcontinent and some neighboring countries relationship and how the boundaries of some states are related with the other that countries and other states. So how it's that the states are sharing their boundaries with the other that states and other countries. Now we have seen that northern plains uh, we have done that not first this the northern mountains in that Himadri, Himachal and the Siwalis we have seen the northern plains are there. Now we will see about the northern plains. The Himadri is there in the northern that mountain ranges and it has three important that peaks Mount Everest, K2 and Mount Kanjunganga. Then the Himachal is there in that that mean that hill stations are present like that Masuri, Nainital, Simla, Kulumulani and another that Darjeeling, Darjeeling these all hill stations are present that hill stations. Now you see the northern plains. The northern plain extends from Jammu and you know Kashmir in the west to the Assam and in the east in covering a large length of 2400 km. The northern plain is there. They extend from the Jammu and Kashmir and you know in the west to the Assam and in the east, west to east, it covers 2400 km long and they lie in the southern of the Himalayas. And are also popularly it is known as the indo gigantic that plains. And you know they are the vast stretches of that land made fertile land. And Ganga, that alluvial plains and deposits, it's brought by the rivers Ganga. The huge fertile lands and plains, it was brought by the river Ganga. And Brahmaputra and Indus and their tributaries. It was a grass, it was a fertile land, it was brought by the plains of river Ganga, Brahmaputra and Indus. So the northern plains can be divided into three parts. The northern plains is there, it is divided into the three parts, and you know, that northern plain, the Ganga plain. The Indus plain and the Brahmaputra plains. So, first of all, we will see the Ganga plain. The Ganga plains is that the very large part of northern India and extends uh, too many states Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, and West Bengal. So, these plains is there. These plains are made by the fertile, by the flowering of the Ganga river and its tributary like Yamna, Komti, Kosi and Gandak and Andhara. These plains is formed by the all rivers and they bring in them that lot of monsters and that you know it's a fertile plains it's made in this place by these old rivers. So 
the Ganga plains and an elevated soil and it's plenty of that water which helps in agriculture. The Ganga plains is that in the elevated soil and is useful in the agriculture and it has a vast variety of soil with it. Crops like wheat, rice and sugar cane and you know maize are grown in the Ganga plains. So these are the crops which you can grow in the Ganga plains. The Indus plain. Most of the Indus plains are there. Lies in the Pakistan with the only a part in India. So most of the Indus plains so lies in the Pakistan, only the part of India and the tributaries of river like Indus. It is the main that tributaries of river Indus that Ravi, Bees, Satlal. This drains these plains in India and it lies in west to the northern that plains in Punjab and Haryana. The Brahmaputra plain is there. The plains in the eastern that part of the India are called the Assam that plains and Brahmaputra plains. That in eastern that plains and in Assam plains or Brahmaputra plains because Brahmaputra river is there flows through them and river from Putra it originates in the Tibet where it is also known as Sangpo from Putra river it originates in the Tibet and in that native it is called as Sangpo and you know from Putra river flow through them it enters in India through Aruna place and flows that to Assam where it deposits alluvial soil which is very helpful for growing crops and it is a mix of fertile plain land and before it terminating in Bangladesh here it meets the river Ganga before it meets with the Ganga river and it enters into Bangladesh it meets the river Ganga there and it meets its combined stream is there it meets the Bifurcates uh, a long number of the channels called that dispensaries forming that world largest delta and it's called that Sundarbar delta. This river and the Chanka river they form the largest delta and it's called Sundarbar delta. River Ganga from Putra that finally you know it's uh, close into the bay of Bengal. They form that place. The peninsular that is the to the south and the northern plains, it lies in a triangle that you know plateaus called that peninsular plateaus. A triangle is the lies in the peninsular plateaus, and it is the oldest landmass. It is the oldest landmass of in India and major that portion of its lies in the central and the south India. It is the largest delta and that is and most of the part lies in the India and in southern India. And the plateau is there and is surrounded by the ranges of all sides. It is surrounded by the ranges of all sides and to the north peninsula that plateau lies in the Alwali, Tindyan and the Satpura and Rajmal hills. It is surrounded by the hills most probably and you know the peninsular plateau is there is divided into two parts. That distinct part is the river itself, you know, distinct part by the river Narmada. The northern part is called the Malva and that is and the southern part is called as the Deccan Bay. Northern part is called the Manwar Plateau and southern part is called the Deccan Plateau. <coughs> the Malwar Plateau is there and is surrounded by the Arvalli Hills in the northwest and India in the south. And its eastern part is there 
and Southern Party that for that known as Bundelkhand and the South that Bihar it is called that Chota Nagpur. It is also called that Chota Nagpur that in Southern Eastern known as Angelkhand and in South Bihar it is called that Chota Nagpur. And you no, know, the Deccan plateau is there. The Deccan plateau extends from the Vindhyas and you know, in the northern to the Nilkiris hills in the south and bounded by the eastern and the western cut. It was bounded by the eastern and the western cuts and it is called the western cuts. The western cuts are Nilkiri that Sahayatri and in Animalai and Adamon Hills and you know that Anamudi in Kerala is the highest peak about 2695 meter and you know river Tapi and Narmada is flows to western cuts into the Arabian Sea. The river Tapi and that Ganga flows into the mixed with the Rio Bengal to in the Great Indian Desert. In the northern part of the India lies the Great Indian Desert or the Thar Desert in the Rajasthan. A large part of the desert are there in the Pakistan and it is the vast desert with dry rocky and salty that island lands and heavily very little and no vegetation and extremely it is a hot weather condition is there at the less water. The Great Indian Desert or the rivers very little rainfall to help people to survive there. The Indian government has there has done constructed Indira Gandhi Canal there at which give relief to that local people. The coastal plains are there. No, the coastal plains lie on the either side of that. The coastal plains lies either side of the peninsula of Tatus, India along the western and the eastern coast. And you know the extents for about the extents for about that 6100 kilometers it extends and the run of Kutch in the west and the West Bengal in the east. So they are totally divided into the east and you know divided into the western coastal. They are totally divided into the western coastal and plains and an eastern that coastal plains. Western coastal plains and eastern coastal plains. The western coastal plains are narrow and the northern part of the western coastal plains is there in Gujarat known as not the Konak coast and it is known as the Malbar coast coast. The eastern coastal plain is there, the eastern coastal plain is there, the eastern coastal plain is there, they are world border than the western coastal plain. The eastern coastal plain is there, it is broader than the coastal plains. It is broader than the western coastal plains and the northern parts of the no, the northern part of the eastern coastal plain is called the northern part is the eastern coastal plain is called the sur circles and the southern part is called Coromandel that is there. The islands, the Andaman and Nicobar, they are the islands and the Lakshdeep are the two famous groups of islands in India and they have been given the state of the union territory that it is. The Andaman and Nicobar islands are there, they lie in the Bay of Bengal and in south and east of India. They are about 572 in number of forming that group. The only active volcano is called that barren island is situated here. The only active volcano is situated here. The Luxdiff Islands are there. They are the group of that coral islands which 
lies in the Arabian Sea and of the coast of Kerala to the south west of India. So these all islands are there that Andaman, Nicobar and that last is they call that kind of that Union Territory. They are declared as the Union Territories by the government of India and all that lies there. So these are the chapters and I hope you understand this well. Okay, thank you children. Bye.